Welcome to the broadcast ministry of Irvington Bible Baptist Church, located in Indianapolis, Indiana. Join us for today's Bible study with Pastor Paul Mailer. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 3. That's where we're going to be at today. Uh, we're going to be a bunch of different places, but uh, we'll uh, springboard from, uh, from there. And uh, and things. So, yeah. but anyhow, so yeah, over in Hebrews chapter three. So uh, the title of today's message is uh, "Have you hardened your heart? Have you hardened your heart? Do you have a hard heart or do you have a soft heart?" That's the question that uh, I'm hoping to be able to help you with here today. And uh, one of the main symptoms of somebody who has a hard heart is if you're sitting there right now, and I said that the title of today's message is Have You Hardened Your Heart? And you're thinking to yourself, that message ain't for me. So uh, it's something that's, that's worthwhile of examining, and that's what we're going to do. There have been many examples in the Bible of people who have hardened their hearts in response to, to God. Some of these people you would expect to have a hard heart, and some other people you would completely expect that they would not have a hard heart. So, in other words, it's just not uh, the lost who have hard hearts a lot of times. Uh, a lot of times, it's safe folks. They put their faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. They know beyond a shadow of a doubt that they're going to heaven when they die, but they still have hardened their hearts over time. And they, they, they dulled their hearts to the Lord. And that's what we want to look at here today. We, we have, like I said, we have a lot of examples of people who've hardened their hearts. You have Pharaoh. Pharaoh's like probably one of the most uh, uh, prolific people, the, the number one person you probably think of when you think of a hardened heart. Uh, uh, most people, they immediately they go to somebody like Pharaoh. Pharaoh hardened his heart. We know that Pharaoh hardened his heart. He wouldn't let the people of Israel go. And he hardened his heart against the Lord. No matter what happened, no matter uh, uh, what the circumstances were, no matter what the consequences were, he uh, refused to listen to the Lord. He refused to uh, submit to the Lord at all. And he hardened his heart. We know that. Uh, the children of Israel, according to Isaiah chapter 6 and verse number 6, and again here in Hebrews chapter 3 where we're going to be here this morning, uh, the nation of Israel, the children of Israel, specifically, multiple times, have hardened their heart against the Lord. And you would think that they wouldn't, right? They, they, all the great things that the Lord did for them, all, all, all the wonderful things that He did for them, He's preserved them through all the centuries, right? Specifically, the, 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 the folks that are being talked about there in Isaiah chapter 6 and again here in Hebrews chapter 3 are the children of Israel who are in the wilderness that the Lord uh, rescued them out of slavery, rescued them out of Egypt, did all those, they saw the plagues, they, they walked across the Red Sea as on dry ground, they ate manna from heaven, the Lord took care of them for 40 years out in the wilderness, and yet still they ended up having hardened hearts. And as a Christian, we too could fall in the same camp as folks that end up with hardened hearts for various different reasons. We're going to look at a few causes here uh, this morning as, as we get going. Uh, an, another person, according to 2 Chronicles in chapter number 36, who had hardened his heart was Zedekiah. Zedekiah hardened his heart. A lot of the kings of Israel hardened their hearts against the Lord. These are kings. Did they harden their hearts? And, and maybe one of the, uh, uh, the most surprising groups of people that, that, that you could think of that actually had hardened their hearts to the things of the Lord were the very disciples that walked in the ministry with the Lord Jesus Christ. You find that in Mark chapter 6, verses 51 and 52. So the question becomes is, is first and foremost, as we're looking at this, and we're saying, well, is your heart hardened or is your heart not hardened? The first thing we need to do is we need to define a couple of things. So the first thing that I want to uh, define here is uh, what exactly does the Bible mean by your heart? Because it's not talking about the organ that's pumping blood and, and circulating uh, uh, you know, the, all that throughout your body and, and all that kind of a thing. Uh, uh, 
for the heart to be defined, it, it's the inner self, the inclination or determination or the will or the intention. It's basically, in essence, it's your spirit. In essence, it's your spirit. It's, it's really in your mind is what is meant by uh, your heart. In uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse number 23, the Bible tells us uh, that the very God of peace will sanctify you wholly, and I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Our, 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 our essence is we are, we are a tripart being. We have three parts. We have three parts. We have the spirit, we have the soul, and we have the body. Your spirit is like your, your, uh, your heart or your mind. The soul is your essence of life, and obviously the body is just your physical body that you have. So you don't want your spirit to be hardened against the Lord. Let's pray. No, if I, Lord, we do want to pray. Uh, for this message here today, Lord, we just ask you, Lord, as we look at these things and we look at what it is, uh, what, what we mean by heart, Lord, and our spirit and our mind, Lord, our very essence, Lord, we don't want that to be cold and dull and hard towards you. Lord, we want to have soft hearts when, when it comes to the things of, of the Lord, Lord, and we just ask you that you would help us to uh, see the types of things, Lord, that would cause us not to have a soft heart, Lord, and uh, of ways that we could uh, correct that. Well, we just pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So in Psalms chapter 26 and verse number 2, the psalmist says, Examine me, O Lord, and prove me. Try my reins and my heart. So the psalmist is asking the Lord to examine him. Uh, but it's always a good idea if we would just examine ourselves. And, and like I said at the very beginning, on the outset, most of us would not consider ourselves to be a person who has a hard heart. We would not consider ourselves to, to have a dull heart to the Lord or, or to be hard-hearted toward the Lord or, or as the Bible calls it in a lot of places, stiff-necked. We don't, we don't, we don't uh, uh, look at ourselves and, and think of ourselves in that way but a lot of the times the way that we respond or don't respond uh, to the Lord uh, would prove out that quite the opposite our hearts aren't as soft as we think that they are so over in 2nd Corinthians chapter 13 and verse number 5 the Apostle Paul writes that we should examine yourselves whether you be in the faith prove your own selves Prove your own selves. We're supposed to examine ourselves. So it's always a good idea just to do a self-examination, just to see where are you with the Lord. And not just where are you in general, because you think, well, I'm a Christian, I, I'm in church, I mean, um, uh, in, in those things, and, and, you know, I read my Bible, and, and uh, uh, I'm not hard-hearted towards the Lord, and, and, and you know, as a general rule. But really, the, the issue of whether you have a hard heart or a soft heart isn't a general principle, but it is how, how uh, hard or soft is your heart at this particular moment. We need to examine ourselves and, and make sure that we haven't hardened our heart towards the Lord and, and we haven't shut ourselves out from the Lord. Hebrews chapter 3. Hebrews chapter 3 here. We'll start in verse 7. Down to about verse number 13. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 7. It says, Wherefore, as a holy ghost saith today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the provocation in the day of temptation in the wilderness. When your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works forty years. 
Wherefore I was grieved with that generation and said, They do always err in their heart, and they have not known my ways. So I swear in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. So it says here that uh, unbelief, unbelief is a sin. Unbelief uh, uh, gives you a bad heart. And you know, with the Lord, it's always a heart issue. He's concerned about your heart. He's concerned about where your affections are set. He's concerned about the things that would uh, play into your decision-making processes. He's concerned about those things. That's what he's concerned about. So he wants to make sure that we don't end up like these Israelites did in the wilderness. He doesn't want us to end up being hard-hearted. He wants us to have a soft heart. Some, sometimes different things that could cause you to have a hard heart is you just might have, you, you might have just gotten hurt at some point. Somebody hurt you. Somebody hurt your feelings. Somebody did you wrong. And uh, that caused you to close your heart off to certain things. The Lord has given us the ability to either open or close down our heart on certain things. And I will grant you, there are some things in life that it's not a bad idea to have a hard heart towards those things. But the Lord is not one of those things. So you don't want to just close your heart down and just shut everything down. Because you want to make sure that you stay receptive and soft towards the Lord. But a lot of times people, they've gotten hurt. They got, they've gotten hurt in their personal lives, and that causes them to have a hard heart towards certain people or people in general sometimes. They, they just completely decide they're not going to have anything to do with anybody anymore because you never know who might hurt you. That happens. People close down. But you have to be careful with that, though, because if you close everybody down, it's going to be really hard to stay soft towards the Lord because if you're going to be soft towards the Lord, you really have to have a heart for other people. And if you have a hard heart towards all other people, then you can't really have a soft heart towards God because He doesn't want you to have a hard heart towards everybody else. So you have to watch that. You have to be careful. But, that, but that's a cause. That's a cause that, 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 that happens. Betrayal. That kind of goes hand in hand with, with being hurt, but betrayal. Sometimes you've just been betrayed. Right? Somebody you thought was on your side, somebody you thought had your back, somebody you thought believed what you believed, and then you found out one day that they didn't, and they let you down. Disappointment's another one. You just got disappointed. And that caused your heart to get hard. You got disappointed in a person, or, or worse yet, you got disappointed in the Lord. You got disappointed in the Lord because He just didn't do what it is that you thought that He should have done. You prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and asked Him to take this thing away. You, you prayed and asked Him to rescue out of this thing. You, you prayed and you asked Him to change the circumstances and the situation and He just wouldn't do it and you got disappointed. So you decided just to close off your heart to the Lord because He's not listening to you. He doesn't answer your prayers. Well, newsflash, He answered. He just said no. He knows what's best for us after all anyway. And another thing, according to 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 and 2, is we could, we could sear our conscience. Unconfessed sin can cause us to harden our hearts towards the Lord. Just living in sin and, and living a, a lifestyle of sin, we know that we're all sinners. We know that 
Uh, the sin nature was not eradicated from us when we came to saving faith and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. We still have the body of sin that we're dwelling in. We, we still have the old nature, and, and then we have the new nature. If, you, if, if, if you've been born again in Christ Jesus, you have a new nature, but you still have the old nature. Congratulations. You're a uh, split personality. You have the old nature and the new nature, and you have to decide every moment of every day and every decision that you make and every word that comes out of your mouth and everything that you think about, you have to decide which nature are you going to follow. Are you going to follow the old nature or the new nature? The old nature doesn't just sit by idly and be all quiet and passive about it either. So we know that, that we still have to deal with sin and we still have to... Ha have to uh, uh, make the right decisions day in and day out. That's why the Apostle Paul has told us over and over and over and over again, put off the new, put off the old man, rather, put on the new man. Right? We have to, we have to decide to walk in the light instead of walking in the darkness. John told us in 1 John chapter 1 and verse number 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's John, the apostle, the beloved disciple. Right? He was saved. He said that he still had to deal and struggle with sin, and we all do. I'm not talking about that. Well, if you ever struggle with sin, then you automatically have a hard heart. That, that's, that's ridiculous because then everybody would just have a hard heart all the time. That's ridiculous. I'm not saying that, but, 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 but if, if you've ignored the Lord when the Lord is dealing with you about something in your life and you just continue to ignore it, and you continue to ignore it, and you continue to ignore it, and you continue to act like that, that's not the case. Well, every time I go to church, I feel bad about this or that, so I'm not going to go to church. Well, no, instead of fixing the thing that's a problem, you stop doing the one thing in your life that's right. I'm not going to read my Bible, because every time I read my Bible, I feel bad about this thing. But instead of stopping doing that thing, you stop reading the Bible, which is the only thing that's going to help to rescue you out of that lifestyle anyway. Right? I'm not going to pray. Same reason. People do these things. Why? And, and, and what they're doing is they're, they're searing their conscience with a hot iron. They're cauterizing it, making it so it doesn't feel anything. It, initially, when you cauterize something and, and you sear something, it's painful at first. But then it stops hurting. It just becomes numb. Like all the nerves just, just get killed off and it doesn't hurt anymore. You don't feel anything. And that's the danger of continuing to live in sin and refusing to do business with the Lord when he is speaking to you. And people decide not to do business with the Lord for, for a bunch of different reasons. One, they think that they just enjoy the thing that they're doing so much that it's worth it to them. They don't want to break off uh, uh, relationships that they know that they should break off. They know that they're no good. They don't want to do that, though, because of the way it makes them feel. Wow. Because of what other people might think. We have altar calls. A lot of times people won't come up to the altar, ever, ever come up to the altar. Because they're afraid of what somebody else is going to think. Well, they're going to think to do this or that. Or, who cares what other people do or what other people do not think? How about this? Maybe people are thinking that there's something wrong with you because you never come to the altar. The issue isn't what other people think. The issue isn't what I think. The issue isn't what anybody else thinks other than the Lord. The issue is what does he think? Because he knows. The eyes of the Lord are every place beholding the evil and the good. He knows that he is dealing with you. He knows that he's putting his finger on that hot spot. He knows that, that he's dealing with you in a, a specific and particular way, and you are refusing to acknowledge that. I may not know that. Nobody else may know that, but the Lord does. And eventually, he's just like, fine, have at it. You don't want to get in that place. You don't want to get in that place. So I want to talk to you this morning about some consequences. Some consequences of having a hardened heart. Some of the consequences are, uh, first and foremost, you see here in Hebrews chapter 3 and verse number 7, 
one of the consequences of having a hardened heart is you become blind to what God wants to reveal to you. You become blind. I have three consequences. They all happen to start with the letter B. But blind. You become blind. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 7 says, Wherefore is the Holy Ghost say it today, if ye will hear his voice. Harden not your heart. A hardened heart makes it difficult, if not impossible, to hear the voice of the Lord. You become numb to what the Lord is trying to say to you. We cannot allow our hearts to be hardened to what God is doing in our lives. You can't allow yourself to become hardened where you cannot hear the voice of God. If you allow your heart to be hardened, and you never respond to the Lord, it's going to come to a point where you can't tell the difference if it's the Lord speaking to you or just you yourself speaking to you. You're not going to be able to hear Him. You're not going to be able to hear His words. You can read the Bible, but it's not not going to speak to you. You're not going to be able to hear what the Lord wants to reveal to you. You're not going to see things in the Bible. Look, when your heart is right with the Lord and and you're in the Word of God and you're studying the Word of God, a lot of times... it's, it's just like all, all, these, all these things just start going off all over the place. You see, you see this connection over here and this connection over there, and the Lord reveals this other thing to you, and this other thing that you've been confused about for years and years and years and years, but you believed it because the Bible said it, but you didn't understand it. And then all of a sudden the Lord will just show you something, and he'll reveal something to you. But if you harden your heart, you're not going to get those things. You're just going to have to go your whole life being confused about that. Some things are just that way because... God's thoughts are higher than our thoughts. But sometimes there are things that He expects you to get. There are things that He expects you to have. There are things that He wants to give you. Things He wants to share with you. Things He wants to bless you with. But you will not allow Him to because you've hardened your heart. You become blind to what He's trying to show you. You become blind to those things. Yeah, maybe you got hurt, maybe you got betrayed, maybe you were disappointed or or what have you. Maybe somebody did you wrong, and I'm sure that they did. People are awful. People in church have done you wrong. Some people think that, you know, well, somebody at Walmart does me wrong or somebody at work does me wrong or somebody in the family does me wrong. Well, we just get over it, no big deal. But somebody in church does me wrong, and I quit. I'm never going back to a church at all ever again. Not even just that one. None. Because somebody hurt my feelings. And they completely cut themselves off to the world. The Lord can't, can't reveal anything to you. The Lord can't show you anything. The Lord can't be a blessing to you. The people that the Lord has put in your life that He intended for you to be a blessing to them, they are now missing out on a blessing because you hardened your heart. But you don't even know. Because you harden your heart and you can't hear him. You no longer hear from the Lord. You're just going through the motions now. Another consequence. Another consequence of a hardened heart is that bitterness will creep into your life and into your relationship. There in Hebrews chapter 3 and verse number 8, he said, Harden not your hearts as in the provocation, in the day of temptation in the wilderness. That's not a day uh, 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 where the Lord tempted them, but that's where they tempted the Lord. They tempted the Lord to anger because they wouldn't respond to him. They wanted to go back to Egypt, you know, a place that he just rescued them from uh, for, for years and years and years and years and years and years. They prayed for deliverance from Egypt. It was so awful and terrible in Egypt. They had to get out of Egypt. They were slaves. Yeah, when it all started off, they were high on the hog. Man, they were doing good. Well, not hog, but they were doing good. Right? Because of Joseph. Joseph was the number two guy in Egypt. Everything was great. They got Goshen. They got their special place that they could live. It was right close to to, to where Pharaoh lived. 
It was great. It was awesome. Then 400 some odd years later, there's a new Pharaoh and he doesn't know anything about Joseph, doesn't care anything about Joseph. Is all he knows is he's got all these people that aren't his people and they're about to under, outnumber his people and he didn't think that was such a great idea. So he puts them under slavery. Tries population control. Everything else. It was terrible. It was awful. They're begging the Lord, deliver us, deliver us, deliver us, deliver us, please deliver us. He sends them Moses. They're like, who do you think you are? We're not going to follow you. All right? So then the Lord, you know, he uses Moses and Aaron. He does, you know, the, the template and all that stuff. And he pulls them out of there and everything. And they finally get delivered out of there. They finally come to their senses, follow Moses and Aaron out of the place. And then as soon as they get across the Red Sea, and really even before they cross the Red Sea, they're, they're already murmuring and complaining and act like Moses was trying to ruin their lives. Ruin your life? Your life was terrible. People, people react that way to the Lord Jesus Christ. They get better in their lives because, you know, they got disappointed with this or disappointed with that or I got betrayed here, I got hurt over here or you didn't answer me the way that I wanted you to answer me over here. And they get all disappointed and they just want to go back to the world. That's what Egypt's a type of the world. They just want to go back to the world, back to the way things used to be. Really? You want to go back to the way things used to be? You want to go back to not knowing that if you were to die today that you know for sure where you're going to spend eternity and it's not in the place of fire and brimstone? You want to go back to that, really? I don't think so. They tempted the Lord, they, because they, they completely shut themselves down to him. They were hard-hearted to him. They were stiff-necked to him. Provocation, uh, if you define provocation, it, it, it means it, it, it's like a form of bitterness or resentment. They, they actually got to the point where they resented the Lord. They resented him. Everything that he did for them, and they resented him for it. And if you allow hardness to creep into your heart, you will come to the place, believe it or not, you will come to the place where you're going to resent God. Why resent God for all the great things that He's done for you? The Bible says we're supposed to present our bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service. It's the least that we can do because of everything that He's done for us. He became flesh. He left glory. Became flesh. Born in a manger. We're you ready to celebrate, you know, Christmas, even though he wasn't born in December. He was born in September. But anyway, getting ready to celebrate Christmas and all that. Because he was born in a manger, lived a sinless, perfect life. He gave that life voluntarily up for you and for me, so that we could have eternal life. And then you're going to allow yourself to come to a place where you resent him for that. That makes no sense. It's not logical. But that's a consequence of having a hardened heart. You continue to harden your heart. You continue to refuse to submit to him. You continue to refuse to respond to him when he speaks to you. You will come to a place where you're going to resent it when he tries to speak to you. Instead of loving it when the Lord, you, you should love it when the Lord is dealing with you. That should be the highlight of your day, even if he's dealing with you and telling you, hey, dummy, stop doing that. Because he chastens a son that he loves. What you should be worried about is if he's not dealing with you. But if you allow... Hardness to creep into your heart. One of the consequences is you're going to start to resent it when the Lord is dealing with you. Hardened heart's going to cause bitterness to rise up. Look, we think of Pharaoh. Even after the death of the firstborn in all of Egypt, Pharaoh made one final mistake. He just would not give up. He led his army straight into the watery grave. Why would he do that? Think about it. Everything that he just saw that the Lord did. Everything. He tried to get his magicians to counter all the miracles. And, 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 and at some point in Exodus chapter 10 and verse 7, his, his servants uh, told him, uh, they, they said, How long shall this man be a snare unto us? Let the men go. 
His servants are just like, let him go, man. Just let him go. This is nothing but trouble for us. But Pharaoh wouldn't get it. His servants got it, but he didn't. Deep down, he probably did. But his delusions of grandeur blinded him. And he lost everything. He lost everything. Because he let that bitterness creep in. And that's the ultimate warning to us. If we let bitterness creep in, if, if we allow ourselves to have hardened hearts towards the Lord, if we can continue to refuse to submit, then it's going to end up being your ruin. The third consequence we'll talk about is having a hardened heart will cause you to have a broken relationship with the Lord. Cause you to have a broken relationship with Him. Now, we know Pharaoh didn't really have a relationship with the Lord, but Pharaoh, Pharaoh, Pharaoh said over there in uh, Exodus chapter 5, verses 1 and 2, it says, And afterward Moses and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, let my people go, that they may hold a feast unto me in the wilderness. Pharaoh said, Who is the Lord, that I should obey his voice and let Israel go? I know not the Lord, neither will I let Israel go. Pharaoh asked, Well, who is the Lord, and why should I pay any attention whatsoever to him anyhow? Now, Pharaoh didn't have a relationship with the Lord, but presumably you're saved in here today, and you do. But you could still come to a place if you let hardness creep into your heart where that relationship that he made possible for you to have with him becomes broken. And you begin to ask yourself, even if not uh, uh, literally and physically ask yourself, but, but subconsciously you ask yourself, well, who is the Lord anyway? Why do I have to obey him all the time? Why do I have to do it his way? Why can't I just do it my way? We... I mean, I, I, I'll end up in the same place. I'll end up in a good place. I have good motives. If you allow your heart to remain hardened, you will damage your relationship with Him. Because you will be unwilling, unwilling to obey His voice. That's going to break your relationship. You don't want, you don't want to get in that. A hardened heart will cause you to have a broken relationship with the Lord. So how do we counter the hardened heart? How do we counter it? Right? So we looked at the causes. We looked at the consequences. How do we counter it? How do we counter having a hard heart? What's the solution? Well, Psalms chapter 119 and verse 112 Psalmist says, I have inclined mine heart to perform thy statutes always, even unto the end. You know, in order to incline something, you have to take action. You have to take action to incline something. You know, some, something is, is laying uh, prone or even is declined, and you have to incline it. You have to incline your heart. You have to take action. You have to take action. If you don't want to have a hardened heart, if you want your heart to be soft towards the Lord, you have to do something about it. You have to incline your heart to the Lord. You have to take control of your heart and set it on some things. You have full control of your heart. People always say, well... The heart wants what the heart wants, and I can't help what my heart wants. And Yes, you can. But you have to take action. You can't be passive about this. You can't be passive about, about the subject of the, whether your heart is hardened or not. If you're passive about it, then you are going to tend towards a hardened heart. Because with the Lord, nothing is more important than where your heart is. And so if you don't think it's important, if you don't think that it requires and, and it deserves your attention, 
then you're just taking a step towards being harder and colder and duller and blinder towards the Lord. You need to set your heart on some things. Turn with me over to 1 Chronicles. 1 Chronicles chapter 22. You need to set your heart to seek the Lord. 1 Chronicles chapter 22. Verse number 19. Now set your heart and your soul to seek the Lord your God. Arise therefore and build ye the sanctuary of the Lord God to bring the ark of the covenant of the Lord and the holy vessels of God into the house that is to be built to the name of the Lord. You need to set your heart, you need to incline your heart to the Lord in order to do that. You need to set it on some things. You need to set your heart to seek the Lord. To seek the Lord. In, 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 in other words, if you want to uh, maintain a soft heart, if you want to counter having a hard heart, instead of setting your heart on the things of the world, on the things below, on the things that the world wants you to have, on the things that the, the media wants you to set your heart on and think about, on the things that your, your employer wants you to think about and have your heart set on or your family or anybody else, you need to seek the Lord. You need to seek to have a more personal and intimate relationship with the Lord. Set your heart on that. Set your heart. Make a conscious decision that you're going to set your heart on trying to seek the Lord. Find Him in everything and everywhere that you go. Find Him in every conversation that you have. Find Him in every circumstance. Seek the Lord. Search for Him. Seek after Him. And that will help you to create and or maintain. So maybe you're already in here and you, and you don't have a hard heart, and I pray that nobody does. But like I said, it's not just a, some, something that you do at one time. Like, okay, well, I, I don't have a hard heart anymore. Now I have a soft heart. I'm good to go. I set it on soft, and now I'm done. Don't have to worry about it anymore. It's not a setting on the stove. It's like, well, let me put it on medium. Not too hot, not too cold. Goldilocks will be happy with it. It's something you have to do day by day, moment by moment. You have to set your heart on the Lord to seek after the Lord. To really want to get to know Him more. Not just to realize that He's made it possible, which is unfathomable even to, to wrap your mind around that you could have a relationship with the Creator. But that you want that relationship to grow closer and deeper and more personal as the day... And the moments go by. Actually seek after that. Make it a point to do whatever you can do or need to do to make sure that you're seeking after strengthening that relationship. Just like you would do whatever you have to do to strengthen personal relationships with you know, your family or your honey or whoever. Seek after that with the Lord. Set your heart on seeking after the Lord. Another thing you need to set your heart towards is just simply according to Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 46 is you need to set your heart toward all of His words. All of His words. Deuteronomy 32 and verse 46 says, And He said unto them, Set your hearts unto all the words which I testify among you this day, which ye shall command your children to observe to do all the words of this law. You need to set your heart and make a decision that you're going to love 
the words of God. You're going to love the Bible. Psalms 119 and verse 113 says, I hate vain thoughts, but the law do I love. Love the law. Love the Word of God. Love it. When you love something, you want to spend time with it. When you love something, you want to talk about it. When you love something, you, you, just, you just want to be around it as much as possible. That's how we should be with the words of God. It's the only true way to know God is to spend time in His Word. Psalms chapter 19 and verse 11 says, Moreover by them is thy servant warned, and in keeping of them there is great reward. There's great reward in keeping the words of the Lord. How can you keep them if you don't know them? There's great reward. That reward, in part at least, is that you can maintain and encourage a deeper relationship with your Creator. That will help you to maintain a soft heart. Because look, if you're already in the place where your heart is soft to the Lord, thank the Lord for that and pray that it continues that way for all the days of your life. But if it's going to, you, you, you have to cultivate that. You have to cultivate that. It's not just automatic. It's not just set it and done. It's something that you have to cultivate. It's something that you have to work on. Look, most Christians don't take the time to study God's Word. They prefer experiences instead. Right? Well, I don't, you know, they say, I don't want to spend a bunch of time reading, studying the Word of God. I just like to experience God in my life. Well, that's great. I do too. I do too. But experiences alone will not keep you from having a hardened heart. Because just look at the nation of Israel we're looking at here in Hebrews chapter 3. Right? Which is referencing what happened back there in Exodus and Numbers and Deuteronomy, right? Look, the children of Israel saw the ten plagues. They walked across the Red Sea as if on dry ground. Not only did the Lord just split the Red Sea so they could get away and get through, it was dry ground. Right? He fed a manna from heaven. He took care of them for 40 years in the wilderness. Their clothes never wore out. Ever. They, 40 years, same, same pair of drawers. The Lord did that for them. Took care of them for all that time. If experiences would give you a soft heart, then the Israelites' hearts would have been mush. They would have been mush. Couldn't have been any softer. But it wasn't. They, they had hard hearts. Because the experiences alone won't do it. They won't do it. Pharaoh never would admit that he was wrong. In spite of all the evidence to the contrary. He would never admit that he was wrong. He never repented. He never admitted his mistakes. My question is, is that how we are? Is that how we are sometimes? We won't repent. We won't admit it when we're wrong. We won't admit mistakes. We try to justify it. We won't come up to the altar and do business with the Lord. Well, I'll do business with Him later. I'll do it on my own terms. If so, then we're just like Pharaoh. We're full of pride-filled delusions that will end up being our downfall in relationship to our relationship with the Lord. As a result, Pharaoh decided that he would sit in judgment of God's Word. He decided that he would criticize God's Word. He even challenged God's Word. And if you refuse to soften your heart to the Lord, if you refuse to respond to the Lord, then you find yourself in the same place. You're challenging His Word. You're criticizing it. You're judging it. You're deciding what you ought to do. If Pharaoh wanted to avoid having a hardened heart, and more importantly, if you want to avoid having a hardened heart, 
You just need to submit to his word and you need to listen to his voice. The hardness of Pharaoh's heart eventually caught up with him. It also caught up with the children of Israel. Caused them not to be able to go into the promised land. And living with a hardened heart still has serious ramifications. And it will catch up with us too. I'm closing. But your heart is either hardening against God because you're resisting His ways, or your heart is growing softer because you're submitting to His Word. Which is it for you? Are, we, are you resisting Him? Are you resisting admitting when you're wrong? Are you resisting getting right with Him? Are you resisting responding to Him as He is trying to reveal something to you? Are you resisting that? Or are you responding to it? That's the difference between a hard heart and a soft heart. You could be saved in here today. Put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, knowing that you're saved by grace through faith, that not of yourselves is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. We know you can't work your way to salvation, and you can't keep your salvation by doing works. It was a free gift given to you freely, paid by the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary. But that doesn't mean that there aren't things that you're expected to do once you're saved. And you could be a saved person in here today, and have a hard heart towards the Lord, refusing to respond to Him. Well, you're too busy with your life. You're too busy doing this, and you're too busy doing that, and you got all this other stuff going on, and I can't, co- I can't come up there and come up to the altar and do business with the Lord because everybody's going to think that that, that that message was aimed at me or what have you. I don't have any preconceived ideas about any of that. If somebody comes up here and prays on the altar... I don't think, wow, good, that message really hit that person good today. It's not what it's about. The Lord could be dealing with you about something completely foreign to anything that's been said within these four walls today. But the issue is if the Lord is dealing with you about something, anything at all, doesn't matter what it might be, how big or how small that you think it is, you need to respond to Him. Because if you don't, if you don't, You start the process of hardening your heart. Over in Mark chapter 14, the Lord told us the parable of the sower. Right? Some seed fell on the roadside. The roadside's a hard place. Right? Some seed fell amongst the thorns and things like that. It's a hard place. Right? But the seed that fell on the good ground, It was able to take up root. And it was able to accomplish what it was intended to accomplish. Why? Because it fell on the good soil. What's the good soil? The good soil is the soft soil. I mean, if you ever plant anything, you know, you got to soften that soil up to get the seed in. It needs to be soft. And if you want to be fruitful in your Christian life, you need to cultivate your heart, that it stays soft, that the seeds can get in and they can grow. Otherwise, you're just going to get choked out. Might give you a high for a minute, but then it's here one minute and gone the next. It won't produce any real fruit in your life. It all depends whether you have a hard heart towards the Lord or a soft one. I pray that you have a son. Heads bowed and eyes closed. Ask Sister Julie to come up and play just for a few minutes. Like I said, if the the Lord dealt with you about anything today, anything at all, don't shut yourself down to it. Respond to him. Be open. Maybe the Lord's not dealing with you about anything today. and That's something to come up here and try to get fixed as well because maybe that means that your heart's already hard. And He's not able to 
reveal to you what he wanted to reveal today. Either way, don't walk out of here without doing business with the Lord. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. 